Now, she's an African woman, and she's at the forefront of independent technological development. And it's people like her that could really revolutionize the continent and its growing tech industry. Her name is Omola Bake Adenle. She's a Nigerian-American tech engineer, investment strategist, and software developer who's won a top award for building an application program interface that can help you learn five African languages, including the Nigerian languages of Yoruba, Igbo, and Hausa, as well as Kiswahili and Kenya Rwanda. It's a sophisticated voice recognition and speech synthesis software that's similar to the technology behind uh, Siri and Alexa. And it's a big boost for tech in Africa and a great inspiration for women who are in tech or who want to be part of the tech revolution that's sweeping across the African continent, particularly in places like Nigeria, Kenya, Rwanda, and South Africa. And I'm delighted to say that the tech engineer and software developer Omola Bake Adenle joins me now from London. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And I suppose congratulations are in order. I mean, you've won an award. It's not every day that you get to pick up such an award. So congratulations. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, what made you decide to build an app that can help people to learn African languages of all the things that you could have done? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, so, so the idea to, to build the app actually came from me watching my nieces and nephews uh, playing with an English language learning lab. The, the app had animated flashcards and it taught each letter in the English alphabet. And I figured we should have something similar for African languages. And I decided to make one for Yoruba. And, and how did it metamorphose from that into clearly what is now bigger? Because, I mean, you've now got several other languages and it's come to the attention of a lot of very important people. Yes, uh, so it, it's been quite a journey. Uh, the, the original app, I just kind of built it in, in my spare time as a, something, something uh, to do out of interest. But uh, at the time, I was working in investment banking, and I, I felt a need to make a change and, and to pursue entrepreneurial interests. And I was wondering which way to go, what to do, and I thought about expanding the app and adding features that required voice recognition and speech synthesis. Sort of, you know, when you talk to Siri and Siri talks back to you, the, the kind of technology that facilitates that. And I realized that very few African languages were supported. And I had an inkling that there was true commercial, economic and operational value uh, in building a platform that supported uh, these features for African languages. And so I went about doing that. And it was a, a quite a sharp pivot. Absolutely. And uh, it's the same sort of underlying technology from what I've read, um, your sort of software that's behind digital assistants like Siri and Alexa. I mean, that suggests that your app must be pretty sophisticated and fairly complex. Yes, it, it's actually more than an application. I know that we've kind of gone a little bit viral on Twitter where um, people are thinking of purely uh, or primarily in, in the context of learning languages, but really what we've built is a platform of speech technologies that facilitates voice automation in African languages. So uh, we support voice recognition, i.e. the ability to understand speech and speech synthesis, the, the ability to generate synthetic speech in African languages. And we provide tools that enterprises can use to build uh, voice automated experiences for their customers. And considering the, the large number of languages that are spoken on the continent, considering the relatively manual nature uh, that enterprises in Africa use to interact with their customers, we believe there's a significant opportunity to a, deliver value to African enterprises, and B, uh, help African people experience information through voice. 
well, all right, then you've got my nomination as the next uh, Minister of Science and Technology in, in Nigeria. Maybe not in this government, uh, hopefully the next one that comes after 2023. I mean, we need people like you. So, so what stage is it at presently? I mean, is it now available on the market? If not, when are you planning to launch it? And what are the sort of the, the next steps sort of thing? Yes. So we're currently in private beta, working with a few enterprises across Africa to build customized voice experiences that will effectively launch the platform. Um, we currently support Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Kiswahili, and Kenya, Rwanda, but we have uh, very broad uh, aims to support a very large number of African languages. We have operations at the moment in four African countries where we're building out a sustainable effort to collect the data that we need to be able to build the models to ensure that we offer the broadest coverage of African languages of any speech technology provider. And I mean, what, what's been, because obviously there's a lot of excitement um, among sort of tech uh, people in, in Africa about what you've done, but, but what's the, have you got any sort of reaction on a political level about this because i mean this could not only could it revolutionize the sort of the the marketplace in africa i mean with with the new you know communications and people trying to get together from different countries and so on i mean it could be just incredible in terms of economic advancement yeah definitely we we think that there's an immense market opportunity we think that there's an immense social value as well uh, in many African countries, literacy rates are still very high, and that presents a barrier to information access. It presents a barrier to service access, and we want to be able to be that pipeline that uh, the everyday person can use to access information, digital information. And we also want to be the conduit that enterprises can use to reach their customers and create new experiences for their customers using everyday speaking, everyday speech. And, and just as an aside there, I mean, you, you are a sort of Nigerian-American or American-Nigerian, depending on which bit that you kind of associate with more. But you're in London. What are you doing there? Is it related to what you're doing at the moment? Well, I, I think I'm probably uh, a member of the, 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 the class of the peripatetic Nigerian. Uh, we live everywhere and nowhere. Uh, I moved from Nigeria to America to England for studies, and, and I, I live here uh, mostly now. Very interesting. And just returning to the main subject, obviously, of the chat, um, I suppose for African languages, some of which face the possibility of extinction. At one point, Igbo language was seen as under threat. I mean, your app potentially gives them a new lease of life, while at the same time also making information more accessible to many Africans, especially those who only speak their native languages. Yeah, that, that, is, that is pretty much the thesis. We know that in major urban centers, uh, Many people speak uh, dominant colonial languages, but when we move outside of these urban centers, we find people who still speak primarily their native language. And in addition to only speaking their native language, many people are illiterate. And when you think about the number of people who are, in effect, marginalized from being able to access digital services and, and digital uh, information, we think that being able to build tools that allow Africans to access information via voice channels is, is an immense opportunity to be explored. Uh, it's, it's something that we see that Western companies um, have been hesitant to, to invest in because there are large uh, data resource requirements. There's a large sort of R&D effort that's required to be able to build solutions that are viable, but we are very much committed to delivering speech technologies for the continent. Absolutely. And, and uh, in recognition of the significance of uh, what you've developed, I mean, you've won an award for that initiative. Tell us more about that award. Yes. So um, uh, it was quite a surprise. I uh, was awarded a Diversity and Equity and Inclusion Award by Women in Voice. And Women in Voice is a not-for-profit organization based in the States that champions the role of women in the voice industry. 
and I was recognized specifically for my efforts building speech solutions or voice solutions that uh, contribute to diversity and equity in the industry because Africans are effectively left out of the voice market because most or none really of the major uh, providers support any African languages. Well, uh, congratulations again for that. But what's your overall sense of uh, the participation of women in tech today? I mean, in Africa in particular, but generally, you know, black women around the world sort of thing. I think that uh, it's, it's definitely an evolving situation. Uh, we have more and more women who are entering the pipeline in, at the undergraduate level, which definitely contributes to... Uh, the opportunity to have women maturing in the industry and reaching more senior roles. We have a lot of companies that are now starting to take seriously the importance of having broad representation of women and people of different races in senior management positions. So one hopes that with the increasing awareness and increasing efforts that we're seeing both in academia and in industry that we'll continue to see more and more women uh, uh, advancing in technology, although, you know, the role of women is, is relevant really in, uh, in all industries. And I think we should, we should continue to champion women even outside of technology and in the arts as well. Yeah, and uh, it's quite interesting that, I mean, I was looking at your profile there. You're not just a sort of a software engineer, a sort of, you know, um, inventor in, in many ways and builder, but you're also an investment strategist. Um, that's a lot of hats to wear. Yes, I, I think my, my primary sort of uh, career is, is, is as a banker, as a, uh, an investment strategist. I, I kind of took a diversion uh, from academia to banking and now to technology. And um, I, I think I'm fortunate to have uh, the ability to, to sort of work across multiple sectors and industries and um, sort of have fun along the way. Yes, but of course, it's the technology bit that's brought us in contact with you. So let's sort of stay with that theme and get your assessment of the whole world. And I use the term quite broadly there, the whole world of artificial intelligence. I mean, that's a revolutionary world, isn't it? And it's, it's transforming things so, I mean, dramatically and so quickly. Definitely, we've seen sort of vast changes across sectors, across the way people interact with each other, how they interact with services, primarily in uh, more developed economies, but we think the transformation is imminent for Africa. And I think because we, we have the examples that we can look to in the US, in Asia, in Europe, uh, we have an opportunity to prepare Africa for the introduction of AI solutions uh, across the continent. And uh, you, you mentioned Africa there. Uh, I'm wondering where you think Africa currently is in the tech revolution and sort of the, the tech startup density. I understand that cities like Lagos, Nairobi are fast becoming major tech centers. And we've got about uh, 25 seconds or so. Yeah, we, we've seen uh, sort of a, a, a blossoming of tech centers across Africa. I think that's contributing really to the sort of renaissance that we're seeing uh, of uh, inventions, of developments, of, of new products. And I, I think that this is only the beginning. We've seen so much growth in payments, but there's so many other sectors that are, are uh, ripe for benefit, uh, especially across the continent. Well, I want to congratulate you again and keep doing the great stuff that you're doing. And thank you very much indeed for giving us your time. That's Omola Bake Adenle, the tech engineer, software developer and investment strategist, talking to me there from London. You